for this video, um, all we're simply going to do is, you know, we're going to apply our operations to verify our identity. So the main important thing is we want to pick one side. I'm going to pick the left side because I know that I have to combine these if I'm going to ever make it look like the right side. If I pick the right side, that means I have to separate it either by using addition or subtraction, which might get a little difficult. So I'm going to choose the left side. And what I'm going to do is, that obviously, if here they're separated by an addition sign, and these are multiplied. So therefore, I need to combine these two terms. Well, you can't combine tangent and cotangent. They're not like terms. And even by writing this as you know, 1 over tangent plus uh, 1 over cotangent, that's not going to help you out either because, again, those don't have common denominators. So there's a couple different ways you guys can do this. All right? um, some students just converted 1, which I liked, and they left it in terms of tangent. And that's a good method because now, to get common denominators, you just have to multiply by tan over tan, right? Therefore, you're left with 1 plus tangent squared of alpha over tangent of alpha. Because when you multiply this, you get tangent squared, so plus 1 over your common denominator of tangent. Then you can convert tangent 1 plus tangent squared into secant squared. over tangent of alpha. Then what we can simply do is just multiply um, to get the tangent off the bottom. You can multiply by cotangent of alpha on the top and bottom. And you're left with secant squared of alpha times cotangent of alpha. Now, this might make, make a little sense. You might say, well, what exactly you know, what do I have here? Well, remember, secant is going to be 1 over cosine squared of alpha times um, cotangent is going to be cosine of alpha over sine of alpha. Therefore, those can uh, divide out to 1, which is just going to leave you with secant of alpha over cosecant of alpha, which is your exact same answer. Okay. The other way you guys could do this, and this is all by doing it on the left side. The other way you guys could work this is also just convert everything to sines and cosines, right? Just convert, remember when I said that's the last step, to convert everything to sines and cosines and see what it looks like. So if you get stuck and you don't know what to do, I didn't see a lot of people get stuck and just write cos cosines and sines. If you get stuck, convert everything to sines and cosines. So cosine to, sine to cosine. So if I was going to still do the left side here, I could do, um, I would have cosine of theta over sine of theta plus sine of theta over cosine of theta. Well, took our alpha, right? Yeah, thanks. So to combine like terms, I need to multiply here by sine of alpha, sine of alpha, here by cosine of alpha over cosine of alpha, leaving me with cosine of alpha squared plus sine of alpha squared all over cosine of alpha sine of alpha. Well, on the top, that goes to 1 over cosine of alpha sine of alpha, which is secant of alpha times cosecant of alpha. Okay, So there's two different methods, ladies and gentlemen, for you guys to be able to solve this problem. Okay, I know it wasn't easy and stuff, but make sure you guys write down that you have that answer so you guys can kind of remember the process to work on. Okay? All right. Uh, if you guys could pass back up those homework quizzes for me, though, please.